Hi guys, this is Angela, and welcome to my channel. As requested by one of my subscribers, today I want to share with you guys how I scan and edit my original art and prepare them for printing. The scanner I use is Canon Light 210. I've had it for a few years already. I'm pretty happy with the color and quality this scanner produces, and it's very lightweight. It can be stored away easily in my workspace. I usually just align my artwork to the edge of the scanner, and for document type, I find that with acrylic drawings, color photo works the best. The document size is set to auto detect multiple documents in case I need to scan more than one piece at a time. The scanning resolution is really important. The recommended DPI by Print Shop would be 400 DPI and 300 at the lowest. I've opt for the highest 600 dpi because sometimes I print my drawing way bigger than its original size. Once everything is set up, I just press scan and the scanning sound usually attracts my cat's attention. You can see here that because I aligned the drawing all the way to the edge, the scanner actually cut off a few pixels of the edge. Usually this is fine with me because I can edit that in Photoshop, but for this demonstration, I'll just scan it again so it's perfect. For printing purposes, I'll be editing the scanned image in Photoshop. I have a Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 that I use for digital work. However, for the basic steps like cropping and rotation, I usually just use the mouse. There's one small thing I noticed when you rotate your artwork in Photoshop is that you should make sure you turn off auto snap because snapping actually limits the angle which you can rotate. Without snapping, I can adjust it to the exact angle I want without losing any part of the artwork. So once I finish cropping the artwork to its original size, I usually would transition to working with a tablet because it's just faster and more exact. If you don't have one, it's totally fine because I do a lot of editing with just using the mouse or laptop touchpad. So I'm just switching over to my screen recording and I'll be explaining to you guys how I edit these images. I've noticed the white gets really muted and dull in these scanned images. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select color range, select the white of my drawing, and I'm going to adjust the fuzziness to around 33. Once I click OK, all the whites in this image will be automatically selected. What I'm going to do next is to fill in an off-white color instead of filling in a pure white color. Even with my off-white fill, I'm going to erase parts of it that I don't want to attract the viewer's attention. For example, the whites that's on the road. After I've sorted out the white of the image, I'm going to try to bump up the brightness and contrast. So I would go to image and auto contrast, auto color, auto tone. With auto color, usually it makes the blue of the image look a bit warmer, which can be nice. So on top of these auto adjustments, I'm going to put on my own adjustments by opening image, adjustments, brightness, and contrast. Usually I would bump up the contrast and then just brighten it by maybe two points. I'm also going to desaturate the image a tiny bit because when you bump up the contrast, the image sometimes gets overly saturated. Oh, notice that I'm doing all these adjustments on a duplicated layer. This way I can adjust the opacity of the duplicated layer roughly to 75%. So I still retain most of the adjustments I did. So what I'm doing next is very specific to acrylic marker drawings because the pen nibs are around one millimeter or three millimeter, there's going to be gaps in between my strokes and the white of the paper will show through in areas where I don't do more than two layers. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer, put it on darken, and then grab the brush tool, put that on darken as well, and color pick the color in the areas that I want to do this fix on. For example, for the blue sky, I color pick a lighter blue in that area and then I just brush in some new blues to cover up the white of the paper. 
So I'll be doing this exact step throughout this image. Not only will I have a layer that's put on darken where I can fill in all these white gaps, I'm also going to have a layer that's put on a normal layer mode and that will be used to fixing the edges where two colors meet. So I also want to show you guys a way to quickly fix small mistakes you've made on the painting. So I'm just using the lasso tool and selecting out the area that I want to fix and then go to edit, fill and fill content aware. This is a new feature in the recent version of Photoshop that I find really useful. So next I'm going to fix my gradient in the sky. With acrylic markers it's really really hard to get a smooth gradient. So I usually do a bit of fixing in post by just using a brush and blending in that area a bit more. So just a few more edits here and there and I'm pretty much done editing this image. And let's compare it to my original and you will be able to see the difference. So overall it just looks a lot cleaner and that's what I aim to do with these edits. So I'm just going to save this image over its original scan. Right now I'm in RGB mode but usually for printing you need to change your image mode to CMYK. After you switch to CMYK the colors will change permanently. Even if you switch back to RGB it will still stay in the CMYK colors. So that's why now that I've converted to CMYK I'm going to save it as a new file. And let's just quickly compare the two versions. With CMYK mode, I find the colors to be a bit duller, a bit desaturated, and the contrast is just not as great. I would make some further contrast adjustment just to bump up the really dull CMYK colors. So now that this file is in CMYK, it's basically ready for printing. I usually print these drawings as postcards, and I actually draw these drawings on postcard paper, which is the exact size that I will be printing. In. So I'm opening up canvas size and switching to inches and you can see that it's roughly 6x4 which is a standard postcard size. And to get these files ready for printing, I would need to create bleeds. It basically means you need to create an extra border around your image. So when print shops print multiple images on one big piece of paper, they can cut it up without worrying whether or not they will cut off a bit of your artwork during that process. So the recommended bleed for a postcard would be 1 8 of an inch around each side, which will make my new document size 6.25 inch by 4.25 inch. Now that I have this border around my artwork, I need to fill in this empty space. So I'll be using edit, fill, and content aware. This is the fastest way to fill in this gap. Although fill content aware is really useful, but it isn't perfect. So I would make more individual selections and use fill content aware again to fix all the imperfections. So once it's in the right file size and you think the color and contrast looks okay, this drawing is finally ready to be sent to a print shop. And I did the same editing process to all of my Ghibli drawings recently. I'll show you guys two examples here. For the Kiki's delivery service drawing here, I actually had to edit a bit more than usual because I really didn't like how messy the sky looked. I had to fix the blending in the sky as well as brighten some of the ground. And after I did all that, I had to brighten the overall image because the print shop I work with, they tend to print a lot darker than what I can see on my monitor. Editor. And here's another example from the Ghibli series that I didn't have to edit that much. I basically just had to fill in all the white gaps in the sky and in the sea and I just brightened the overall image. So here is the proof that I received a few days ago of this postcard set. Print shops usually have the option of sending you a proof which is a sample before they go into full production. So with the proof, I was able to see what areas I needed to edit further before I send in another round of files for them to print the final product.
So that's it for this video. That's how I scan, edit, and prep my file for printing. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you guys in my next video. Thank you.